What's up gamers? Aaron Shack here with an update on Marvel's Avengers. Uh, we have the one and only Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier, in the August development update. Now, Paul Tassi on Twitter dropped the news right at 12 before even uh, the Avengers account dropped their blog here. Um, but let's go ahead and look at the official news here. And if there's anything uh, that Paul's written, we'll elaborate on as well. Um, so they're saying the next update is 2.6, uh, which makes sense because, you know, 2.5 was a Jane Foster update and is currently expected to release in September, which as a recording of this video, it is August the 18th. Um, so September is not very far away. Um, it will introduce the No Rest for the Wicked War Zone, which is a villain focused adventure for all players the scientist supreme aka monica um, is running out of resources and clones and takes further risks to secure aim's power monica has recovered modok from the san francisco bay with plans to revive him for use as a weapon against the avengers our heroes must put an end to our plans before the mutation madden genius returns which obviously i feel like he's gonna return Alongside the Warzone, uh, starting in 2.6 and continuing into future updates, we'll be rolling out updates to our full roster of heroes. One of the most important elements of Marvel's Avengers is that everyone on our roster feels heroic to play. So, much like, you know, we've been talking in a lot of our live streams and gameplay sessions, um, we've been saying like, oh, Thor kind of needs an update after we've seen how mighty Thor plays. Or we've, you know, we've looked at different characters and we've said, you know, oh, Hulk might need, like, some changes to his traversal. Or, like, why doesn't Black Widow have a wall run? You know, like, and, and the devs have sort of noted it time, time and time again here every now and then that they're, you know, hinting that they're working on various things such as that. But let's keep reading. Let's uh, keep going here. Um... Everyone in the roster feels heroic to play, right? This will be an ongoing process over several updates as we look at combat, balance, and traversal and make tweaks and changes to make sure every hero continues to feel like they've leapt from the pages of the comics. So that's one thing that they've really done really well. They've nailed the combat. I mean, overall, I'd say they've nailed traversal, um, but, you know, there's always room for improvement and... You know, some heroes are, like, slower to run around than others. Black Panther can't really keep up with other heroes. Like Captain America, you can just hold the right trigger to, to sort of do the, the shield charge and sprint really fast for a limited amount of time. Black Panther doesn't really have anything like that. But Widow has her grapple, so it's like she doesn't have to endlessly sprint around unless there's nothing to grapple to. So, I mean, traversal on some characters is really fun, and then on others, it can be somewhat slow. Um, let's see, following update 2.6, um, our next playable content will be AIM's Cloning Lab as an Omega level threat. Um, it features endgame content that will arrive with new gear, increased power level cap, as well as the next step in the conflict between AIM and the Avengers. Uh, in addition to the new o OLT, we are excited to announce a new hero will be joining our roster. As a result of the events of No Rest for the Wicked and Cloning Lab, James Buchanan Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier, will rejoin his former allies and his mentor Steve Rogers. A hybrid brawler and marksman hero, the Winter Soldier will add yet another way to be heroic in Marvel's Avengers. Um, so... What, what we're kind of drawing here, and we'll talk about this more, is that, you know, he's essentially trained in the Red Room, but, like, also uh, trained by Captain America, worked with Captain America, right? But he will not have a shield, so, you know, he is, he is going to be, you know, probably focused on melee combat and then also ranged with his assault rifle, so... You know, if you want to try to li relate him to two characters, relate him to Captain America in his fighting style and also to Black Widow and her fighting style and her agility that she has, right? So he could be a really fun character to play as, and I'm very excited to see him in the game. Uh, we'll have many more details about Cloning Lab and the Winter Soldier after the release of 2.6. Uh, we know you're excited about the plans we have for 2.6 and beyond, and we hope this glimpse excites you as well. Beginning in Update 2.6 and continuing beyond, we'll be taking our heroes on new and different adventures to encounter fresh threats, reunite with friends, and find new allies. 
With Marvel's Avengers now available on both Xbox Game Pass and PS Plus Extra, there's no better time to grab your friends and build your own superhero squad. Thanks again for adventuring with us and Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Yeah, so last night we were staying up watching the Embracer Group Q1, like earnings, Q&A, all that stuff. They didn't really talk much about Avengers, and it, it was slightly boring, but we do know that there's over 300 or at least 300 people at Crystal Dynamics. Um, and and so I, I guess it's really unknown as to how many of them are working on Avengers if the studio is split between working with the initiative on the new Perfect Dark game and you know potentially working on the Unreal Engine 5 Tomb Raider game. Uh, but now we're going to take a look at what Paul Tassi has to say because there's a little bit extra that he picks up uh, because he got to sit down and talk with Avengers lead designer Brian Wagoner, okay? Uh, so Wagoner says that the player base has been boosted now that is available essentially for free, right, as a part of Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation Plus's extra tier, right? Um, it's unboarded a lot of players, and no doubt those players are buying a lot of MCU skins and... And, uh, yeah, there's certainly been a lot of those. Uh, incredibly significant growth. Those subscription plans have been huge for us, uh, much like Guardians of the Galaxy has really picked up on its player base and got more people in because of its expansion into Xbox Game Pass. A lot of people are discovering that game as well. Uh, it's a low-risk way uh, for them to try a new game. It's almost like going free-to-play, but not really. I, I can relate to that. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, September is the villain sector meant to move the story forward, which involves Monica attempting to reboot Modoc. Um, the mission has been compared in difficulty to the Cosmic Cube, which I think is a great mission. I, I do wish that the Cosmic Cube uh, fight maybe had some sort of like OLT type version where it was like really difficult and we could like replay it to get really dope gear. Um, but that's fine. I guess this is where we are. Uh, you'll indeed be finding her again. Modoc comes later. Um, this patch also comes with a, 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 a pass on mass buffing, heroic ability damage, and having players get staggered by enemies less. So yeah, if you've been watching a lot of our gameplay of running through the raids and OLT and stuff like that, it feels like it feels like you get ambushed by a lot of enemies that can just stagger you to hell, and you just can't really do anything about it when some of those horn echoes are just like. They just have you staggered, and you're you're stunned, and you can't move. You're stun locked, and you know you have to rely on your buddies to come over and knock that enemy out or defeat them, um, in order for you to you know sort of regain movement of of your character. So uh, yeah, keep going on here. Uh, Two point seven, which brings the arrival of the first new hero since Jane Foster, but also truly the first new hero since. Spider-Man, because, you know, we could consider Jane Foster an Echo Hero, but I would argue that she is a incredibly well-done and, and different hero, and, and she earns her own place in the game um, alongside, you know, Odin's son Thor. This dispels previous rumors that the next hero would be She-Hulk, which obviously would have lined up better with the just-released Marvel series She-Hulk. Uh, Wagner says this was always the plan to have Bucky come after Jane, um, so don't believe every rumor you hear. Uh, details on Bucky Barnes are a little scarce, but I confirm that he is not what you would call a mirror or echo character, okay? Um, like Jane Foster was to Thor, he has his own set of moves and abilities, including use of the assault rifle seen in the photo. He's still in testing, so they don't want to confirm specific heroics or anything yet. Uh, Wagner did say there would be influences from characters like Captain America and Black Widow. However, he's trained with Cap, right? So he may f share a similar feel, I guess. I don't want to say that he has a shield or anything, because he doesn't. But his fighting style would feel like they had trained in the same place, and our Winter Soldier also trained in the Red Room. So you may see some things where we took inspiration for Black Widow's kit, but no, they're not sharing any abilities or anything like that. So it's really cool to see that Bucky will be his own character, his own heroics, his own abilities. You know, if you enjoy playing Cap, if you enjoy playing Widow, 
then it means, okay, you'll enjoy playing this character as well. Like, it's a sure bet, right? I'm a big Cap fan, and I, I Cap is one of my favorite characters. He's kind of my main character in the game. But I also spend a lot of time on Widow before I unlock Cap. And I have a really great Widow build, and I enjoy, you know, sort of her melee setup and even her range setup to an extent. You know, I don't prefer playing ranged, um, but it is fun utilizing her guns, and I think it's going to be great utilizing um, Bucky's assault rifle. I think that's going to bring a new approach to the game, uh, whether it's like rapid fire or slightly longer range and, and more of a concise um, shooting range, you know, whereas Black Widow's SMGs just kind of spray all over the place and they're horribly inaccurate, but they do do a lot of stun damage and they put in a lot of rounds into your enemy. Maybe Bucky is going to be a little more precise with his assault rifle. We'll, we'll have to see. I mean, that's really just me theorizing here. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Bucky is not the only addition 2.7. The long-awaited, not-killed... Uh, cloning lab is is finally coming we know about this since 2020 uh, something has been talked about as an end game activity since the game launched uh, this will piss against modok and the cloning lab has a story behind it that explains why we've been fighting this endless string of abominations and taskmasters it is an omega level threat um, i don't know why he says same as the raid i I think it makes more sense to say it's same as a super adaptoid fight. I don't know how much Paul Tassi still plays Avengers or is like educated on what's going on with Avengers because I think lately, you know, he's more into like Destiny and other types of games and, and that's more his typical news coverage here. Um, but I don't know if that's just kind of an error there or just like not fully understanding what's going on because I think he's probably been MIA on Avengers for a while. Most of his articles have been quite critical, so it's been interesting to see him bringing in some news here. So, uh, the Omega level threat, uh, much like the raid, much like the OLT uh, Super Adaptoid fight, will feature new gear cap, loot to farm, uh, cloning lab in Monica's villain sector before that, um, opens up narrative beats explaining why we are seeing Bucky Barnes return. So that's good. I hope this is better than like the hero event like we got with Spidey and Jane Foster where it just it just kind of dumps a new character in and and they're just like, yeah, go fight aimbots now or, or whatever it is you do. You know what I mean? So it's like I, I've wanted cutscenes. I've wanted like some sort of reason I want him to interact with other characters. You know, Jane Foster, it's like we got the one cuts, you know, like animated scene, but it wasn't like an in-game, you know, like motion captured cutscene or whatever. You know, like I'm, I'm longing for stuff like that. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's good to see that maybe this means that Bucky Barnes will get just a little bit more narrative you know a justification as to why he's here more than us just listening to like lore audio tapes and stuff like we had to for spidey and and jane foster so i don't know this has me very excited uh the timing on patch 2.7 is more nebulous it's coming before the end of this year but that's as specific as they could get 2.6 is september late november or is september then late november early december might be a good guess which Honestly, that's what I would say, uh, which is around when Spider-Man and the Wakanda raid arrived a year ago. So yeah, we actually did just celebrate um, War for Wakanda did drop in August of last year. So it has been a whole year um, since War for Wakanda. Spider-Man dropped in, I believe it was November of 2021. So yeah, we're, we're coming up close on on quite a while since we've had like a full-fledged new character but we did have Jane Foster this summer which I think was really great I've really enjoyed playing as her I think my friend Samiro um, Simiro that plays uh, with us on Thursday nights um, has really enjoyed Mighty Thor as well um, that's that's kind of taken over as his main character pretty much um, we'll talk about that more tonight and, and a lot of this news more tonight on the live stream there. Um, let's see, longer term with Avengers doing well on PlayStation Plus and Game Pass was able to confirm that there are plans for 2023 content and beyond. Wagner said outright that the Cree 
invasion would factor into future storylines, which, you know, we we know that the Kree invasion brings Captain Marvel with it. We know that they're building up to this big event based on all the all the DLC and content that we've played up to this point. Um, it is definitely leading up to this big moment. Um, he did say the Avengers may not get anything as big as last year's War for Wakanda expansion, um, which added Black Panther, a sprawling new zone, and a bunch of story quests. Instead, focus on stuff that's more replayable rather than one-off campaigns. So, I mean, that could mean, like, Captain Marvel comes in... Maybe there's a few meaningful cutscenes, but they don't really want to do like a whole linear storyline that's either single player or co-op with no reason to come back to it to grind for gear or whatever it may be. So it's like maybe it makes more sense to drop a raid or maybe it makes more sense to drop a villain sector or maybe both, probably both, I would think. And like a new free roaming area to explore or something. Um... So Avengers lives on. It will continue to produce more content for the indefinite future. Wagner also mentions he's staffing up and building out the team, which we do know from some of the earnings stuff last night. The Crystal Dynamics employs over, you know, at least 300 employees. So they're working on Perfect Dark for Xbox with the initiative, Unreal Engine uh, Tomb Raider, and we'll see what these next two patches bring and how a new hero like Bucky plays in practice. Very excited to see Paul Tassi say, I'll be back for him even if it's been a while. Because I don't think Paul Tassi has probably played this probably since launch, honestly, to be to be fair. Um, so let me know in the comments, what do you think about Bucky Barnes coming to Marvel's Avengers? Uh, what are your theories about why he's joining the team? Will there be tension between him and Iron Man? I certainly hope so. Um, I... Uh, want to know what you think you know about what his combat could be like his heroics his his traversal you know what are the ways they'll utilize his assault rifle and his his prosthetic arm uh i i think the look from this photograph here uh looks very interesting and you know true to the the series and the comics the long hair and all that stuff and hopefully we'll get mcu you know outfits as as we have with all characters i think that makes a lot of sense uh, to see something like that um, but yeah I'm very excited to see a new character like this and uh, you know I look forward to him look forward to She-Hulk and and hopefully she'll be coming maybe sometime next year in 2023 but I think this is a great way to sort of cap off the rest of this year is that if they can get all this content out there and if the player base is really bustling like like Paul Tassi has mentioned here in the beginning of the article that Wagner is really excited that there's sort of this whole new community uh, coming into the game thanks to Game Pass and PlayStation Plus's stuff. You know, you have this subscription base coming in, and it's like maybe it's inevitable at some point that Marvel's Avengers goes free to play, and maybe they just charge for cosmetics, and maybe they even consider charging for certain expansions. I wouldn't be against it because I, I want the game to succeed, and you know. I, I don't mind, you know, throwing money at something that's going to succeed. I do it for Destiny. They drop really good expansions once a year. They come up with new subclasses and updates and stuff throughout throughout the year. Um, so it's it's just incredible. It's it, this is good news for Avengers. You know, if we if we've thought over the past you know year or so with little communication from the devs that maybe the game has been struggling in in some way or another i mean maybe this is confirmation here and with the embracer group deal uh set to go through fairly soon that's why they're not really commenting much on avengers and the future of the game but i i feel like this is all good news and if you know if embracer group had bad news regarding this game it, it just it's not coming anytime soon um there's there's a lot here for the rest of the year and potential hype for next year and i don't think wagoner would be talking about the game in this way if they knew that embracer was just going to shut them down a few months from now or or whatever it may be right so i don't know overall good news i want to know your thoughts in the comments down below like this video if you enjoyed the content and the coverage um, we'll be live tonight, 9 p.m. Central Time uh, with Marvel's Avengers. We'll have two spots open for the raid. We're playing on PlayStation. 
um, myself and Simero and Cress will be on the fire team. Well, I guess that's one spot. Sorry, I can't do math. Um, yeah, we'll have one spot open on the team uh, if anyone wants to join for an elite raid. And we'll probably run a couple of elite raids. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly make room for, for everybody. We love getting to play with our wonderful community here. And running the raid has been a great fun way to increase our power, get to know everybody, have a great time playing a game that we really enjoy together. Um, so that's it on this video. I thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Ring that notification bell um, so you don't miss out on future videos and live streams. We'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye.